<laughs> you know, I remember listening to Scotty open your preach one time, and he pulled out a picture of Mount Rushmore, mm-hmm. and he was talking to an atheist. It's a big picture. And he says, hey, do you, do you, can I convince you that Mount Rushmore happened by chance? And the person said, no, absolutely not. No. He said, well, who created Mount Rushmore? Who carved it out? And the guy had no information whatsoever mm. on Mount Rushmore. Right. But you could not convince the guy that Mount Rushmore happened by accident. Those faces on, the Mount, faces Rushmore. on yes. Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Think of the complexity now of the person who carved the faces into Mount Rushmore. Right. From the human eye to the taste buds to the heart to the mm. everything. It's absolutely amazing. Yet we can look at the human body and go, it happened by chance, well, just given enough time. Scotty's point was those four faces of the four presidents on Mount Rushmore couldn't have happened by chance. But you're saying those four presidents all happened by chance. Right. So it wasn't just rock that was carved out by the weather. Uh, you're saying that those living eyeballs, 137 million light-sensitive cells, and the character, and the blood, and the blood vessels, and the heart, and the liver, lungs, and kidneys, and the hair, and moustache, and nasal hair, all happen by chance. It's crazy. Yeah. And, I mean, if you're an atheist, you have to at least concede to the fact that it leaves us scratching our head how somebody can look at Mount Rushmore and say, hey, that, that could never have happened by chance. However, the human eyeball, that could happen by chance with, uh, what is that, 100 million light-sensitive cells? 137 million light-sensitive cells. Wide-angle lens, instantaneous reproduction. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's absolutely amazing what the human eyeball uh, can So look do. in the mirror, Mr. Atheist. There's your evidence of God's existence yeah. in the mirror looking back at you. And the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, there's a, uh, a missing link chart. Um, boy, it's been since uh, grade school, I think, since I've taken a look at this. But you have it inside your evidence Bible, the missing mm. link chart. And there it is, from uh, Lucy all the way up to <coughs> modern man. Modern man obviously thinks that we came from Now, a this monkey. is from my friend Jack Chick, from Chick Tracks. I think it's from his track right. that okay. he kindly gave us permission to uh, reproduce that. Well, so look at that. The little monkey there, Lucy. Uh, Heidelberg, and a lot of those are uh, bogus. You know, uh, G.K. Chesterton, he said, the evolutionists seem to know everything about the missing link, except the obvious fact that it's still missing. No, he's not. He's over there in our other studio. (laughs) He's in our other studio. You know, and I heard Richard Dawkins say, hey, you're a missing link. I'm a missing link. We are all missing links. Everything is a missing link uh, all the way up till today. But he's missing the point. The point is you don't have any half bird, half dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, and so we have scientists and people that come along and say, you're missing the point. You're not understanding. No, I'm understanding the point. You know, I, and I understand that with my presupposition, I presuppose things to be a certain way. I understand that. I get it. But also the atheist has to presuppose and take a greater leap of faith, mm-hmm. as we just demonstrated with Mount Rushmore, than the Christian does. Yeah, the theist. absolutely. So uh, we want to show you now Ken Ham's response to Bill Nye's video. We are running out of time, but this is Ken Ham's response. I'm going to be uh, speaking with Ken Ham in two weeks at the proofconference.com. Hi, this is Ken Ham, President and CEO of Answers in Genesis and the Creation Museum. Recently, a YouTube video featuring a person called Bill Nye the Science Guy received millions of views. Now, the video was called Creationism is Inappropriate for Children. While I really believe we should call Bill Nye the Science Guy, Bill Nye the Humanist Guy. You see, Bill Nye received the Humanist of the Year Award in 2010. So even though Bill Nye had some wonderful programs on PBS TV teaching exciting things about science, you know, when he was experimenting and putting things together and so on, and, you know, he did some real observational science there, Bill Nye also has an agenda to teach children not to believe in God, to teach them their result of evolutionary processes, that they came from slime over millions of years. In fact, Bill Nye really doesn't understand science. I mean, the word science means knowledge. And you can divide science into historical science, that's talking about the past, or observational science, that's the science that builds our technology. He says if you deny evolution to children, they're going to have problems because we need engineers. Well, wait a minute. Engineering and evolution? What has evolution got to do with engineering? I mean, Bill Nye himself actually is not a scientist. He studied mechanical engineering. 
and he worked for Boeing at one stage. I hope he did not apply his evolutionary principles uh, to any of Boeing's airplanes, because if he did, I wouldn't want to be flying in them. I don't want to fly in something that was built by chance random processes. What do you think, all the parts just lay them out there on the runway and they come together or something? No, of course he didn't apply his evolutionary ideas to his engineering at Boeing, otherwise we'd be in real trouble. Bill Nye is really implying that if we're going to teach children creation, that it's really a form of abuse that creationism is inappropriate for children. I tell you what is real abuse, and I tell you what is inappropriate for children. When you take generations of kids and you teach them, they're just animals, there's no God. You're a result of millions of years of evolutionary processes. You just came from some slime over millions of years. Who determines right and wrong? You do. Who determines what's good and bad? You do. What is marriage? Whatever you want to make it to be. You know, it's really people like Bill Nye that are damaging kids. Creationists are teaching children that they're special, that they're made in the image of God, and of course giving them a basis for developing technology, that we can trust the laws of logic, we can trust the laws of nature, we can trust uh, the uniformity of nature. And you know, Bill Nye really doesn't understand science. He's called Bill Nye the science guy. He doesn't understand science. He doesn't understand the difference between observational science and historical science. I mean, he talks about the fact that, oh, we've got these ancient bones, we've got radioactivity. Wait a minute, of course we can observe radioactivity and we can experiment with it. But when it comes to bones, like dinosaur bones, you don't dig them up with labels telling you how old they are or dig them up with photographs telling you when they lived. He doesn't teach children how to think critically. He doesn't teach them how to think about science. He wants to teach them what to think, and he confuses historical science, beliefs about the past, and observational science that develops your technology. He puts those together and doesn't distinguish between the two. If evolution were true, I mean, it'd be so obvious to the kids that it's true, but it's not. The way to convince kids about evolution is you have to do what Bill Nye the humanist guy wants. You protect them from hearing anything about creation, you totally indoctrinate them, you brainwash them, you don't teach them to think critically at all, don't teach them the difference between historical science and observational science, you just want to make sure they only hear about evolution and that's it. Creationists, of course, are very happy to teach their children about evolution and teach the problems with it and teach their children how to think critically and the difference between historical science and observational science. Isn't it interesting how Christians are not frightened to teach their children about evolution? Two of our scientists here at the Creation Museum, Dr. Georgia Purdom, who has a PhD in molecular genetics, and Dr. David Menton, who has a PhD in biology, have also put up a YouTube video dealing with some of the statements that Bill Nye has made. So I encourage you to go and watch their response to his video entitled Creationism is Inappropriate for Children and see why you don't want Bill Nye the Humanist Guy teaching your children. Boy, that's some uh, interesting things that uh, Ken Ham had brought out. Link, what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently Link's not into that. 